Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to switch Java versions faster in Windows 10. So first of all, I'll give you a quick overview. Basically, to do it, you would make a batch file where you will be able to double click it and change the version of Java that way much quicker than having to do it through the user variables yourself through pathing. So for example, uh, we'll take our Java version currently. Let's say it's Java 8, right? Then we close the command prompt and let's run to be Java 12, for example. And we would check our Java version there. And now it's Java 12. We want to go back to 8. And we could do this for as many Java versions as we want, and that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you the code real quick in case you're already savvy and you just want to know exactly how to do it. There it is. All it is, you set a system variable Java home to the directory of where Java actually is. Um, something's been going on with my mouse. Um, okay, where the directory is. So for example, we would go to uh, C in our C drive. We go to program files, Java, and we'll have these directories here, and th that'll be it. We'll have Java 8, Java 12, or 11, or 14, whichever ones you want, all of them if you want. And then when you go to your user variables, uh, you will just set Java home right here, as you can see. And then in the path, reference that Java home slash bin. So you're not changing the paths themselves, you're only changing Java home. Now, um, that's the overview of how to do it. I'm gonna go through the basics and you could skip ahead to just doing it, but I wanna show you guys uh, the basics of how to do things in general. So for example, first of all, you need to make a batch file. So I'll, I'll start off by telling you how to make a batch file, then doing the pathing, then downloading Java, and then uh, having to do with uh, uh, system variables. So first of all, to make a batch file, let's say we want to do Java 11. We just put 11 at the end, we'll put bat. Now, if you do not have the ability to do that, uh, you can make a new text file and you can name it whichever version of Java you want. Let's do 14 and um, you're not able to change it or the extension is not available to you, um, open it in Notepad and then um, let's file, save as. And when you do this, uh, make sure to turn this save as type into the wildcard. And at this point, you're able to change it to a .bat. And these bats are executable, so you just be able to um, run these as scripts so that you could run commands uh, one right after another. And remember when you do this you have to run it as administrator to change system variables. So that's how you were would create batch files, very simple. And you could take the code in the description and paste it in there. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to learn to downloading Java. So I put some links in the description, but if you don't find the one you're looking for, all you have to do is put Java JDK, let's say 13. And you go to the first one at the top by Oracle, try to keep it Oracle, not, not other vendors. And you download the one for you, either 64 bit or 32 bit. You install it. And when you install it, all of them go to the same uh, file path. They all go to uh, program files, Java. So you'll have them all in here. And this is where you put Java home. And the actual Java exe that runs every time you run a Java program is right here. And remember, it's just a, an exe, so whenever you do Java uh, dash jar and then whatever jar file, uh, you're basically running an exe from here and you're changing which exe you, you run whether it's 8, 12, 11, 13, 14. Another note, 
um, when you do these things, uh, Java 8, 11, and 14 are something called long-term support. So you generally see this on Linux or other programming languages, long-term support. These are the more uh, go-to, de facto standard, whatever words you want to use for uh, Java, making Java programs. So it'll be more um, established for builds and things like that. So like many open source projects have a long-term support version of Java. It's just, it's just the way to go. So that might be some place to start when you do things. Uh, now pathing and user variables, uh, just put in env and you'll see system environment variables. So when we are running uh, these batch files, we're basically changing the environment variables. And these are the same thing as uh, programming variables where you do x equal to 2, x equal to 3 except they are system variables. So uh, for example, whenever I have um, this path list, all of the files that exist in these paths, in these directories, are going to be available to me um, in the command prompt. So what I mean is, uh, there is a file called, um, let's look for it, I think it's Maven. So just imagine any random program here, and I have the bin, which would just be the executables, um, and you can run it. So I, there's an executable like mvn.exe inside of that directory. And usually I will have to write out the entire um, directory in order to do it. So what I mean is, uh, I could, let's see if we can do it, edit it to put it in here, bam, and then I would put slash maven and then version. And you, as you could see, uh, I am showing which version of maven or any executable is in there, but because I've put it in this path, it automatically says, okay, all of these files, it's like we have it in our current directory. That's all pathing is in all operating systems. So once you understand pathing, um, it's very simple. And it's like very foundational for everything. So now I, with the path put in there, I can do mvn-version. And that way, I don't have to put in the entire uh, directory right there and then put mvn slash version. It's the same thing and that makes it possible through pathing. So um, just like x equals to 2, x equals to 3, there is a variable called Java home. And I have assigned it to whichever Java directory I want and I'm reassigning it in the batch file. Then I take that uh, variable and I place it right here at a slash bin, just slap that on top. And every single time I change Java home, I'm able to see the new uh, Java dash version, just like the Maven exe, right? It's just an example. So let me show you what I mean. Um, let's take Java home and let's copy this. And we'll, we'll paste it here, do slash bin slash Java dash version. Uh, I'm not sure why it's, uh, oh, it has to do with the spaces. Okay. I don't know how to do that with, uh, let's try with exclamation, with uh, quotations. There we go. So whenever there's a space, you use quotations. All right. Uh, now I am using the directory, but because we have pathing right here through the variable Java home, I'm able to just put Java dash version. And that way I'm able to switch Java home back and forth and that's how you switch between all the Java versions. Now enough about that, if you have a hard time understanding it, just watch the video again and think about it. I think I said it a few times. 
all it is is pathing and a variable like x equals to 2 or 3. And that's going to be the variable Java home. And the paths right here, this right here. And it's automatically done with this keyword. It's kind of like keywords that already exist in a Java program, right? Like integer, int, string, whatever, in whatever language. That's what path would kind of be like. That's not really it, but you get the idea. Path is special. All right. Um, the next thing would be um, recreating Java home within each batch file. So uh, let's, after we make the file, let's change Java home. So we have a list of Java, Java versions that we would install. And let's go to right here. Remember program files, Java, right here. These are all the versions of Java you have. To download and install all of them from the description and go through these, copy and paste them into this quotation mark area. And remember, you need the quotations uh, in order for it to work because of the spaces within program files. And you can name it whatever you want, Java 8, 12, 14, 7, whatever. And you use the command set x. Now set x comes from set, and all it is is it's setting a variable to this, uh, whatever it is, and then uh, slash m means like make it universal. That's all. That's all dash m means. So set makes this happen. When you do set x, it becomes permanent. So that you're in batch files, you're going to see set right set. Um, y to whatever right something like that but when you do set x it's making it permanent outside of the command prompt m is making it to where it's the actual system variables something like that all you really need to know is you need this and put the directory in there and it's gonna work uh, some tips for getting it to work best um, Every single time you change Java versions, you have to restart the command prompt. So let me give you an example. If you were to type and check your version like this and see you have eight and you were to switch, you wouldn't be able to see the switch in the same prompt. You would actually need to exit out of the prompt and restart it in order to see the change. And you may not see the change even with this. Oh, you did, good. So you have to restart the command prompt every single time. Um, you need the X and set X, you need the slash M, you need the quotation marks, like in the description. Uh, with the batch files, you need to run them as, a, as administrator. Each one has to be pointing to the directory that you want to find the Java version you want. All right, that is it. That is how you create these um, batch files to change your Java versions. Looks like this, and uh, like this notepad or notepad plus plus. Right click, and you run it. Want to see more videos like this? Like what I what I uh, just did? Well, like and subscribe.